Hello, and welcome to this video presentation. My name is Paul Brett. I'm a senior software support analyst supporting the Transformation Extender product from IBM. The topic for this video is a delve into the ITX new installation. Feel free to reach out to me on popular social media channels at Paul Brett IBM. In this practical demonstration, I will walk through the changes that have been made for ITX 11, focusing on the installation changes when compared to previous versions. For example, the installation directory has changed from C colon backslash IBM to C colon backslash IBM plus C colon backslash program data backslash IBM. View the full release notes at the link on screen. I'm going to start this installation on a fresh virtual machine. This machine has never had ITX installed before. In my downloads directory you'll see I have both the design studio and the runtime modules ready to install. So let's open a command prompt as administrator and we'll install the design studio first. I shall install in English. Let's walk through the installation screens. Here I click next. Here I agree with the license agreement. I'm going to put in a standard username. Here's where the first difference comes from the standard ITX installations before version 11. The default directory is now c colon backslash program files backslash IBM transformation extender underscore 11.0.0. This is a change from previously where it was just c colon backslash IBM. So this is where the program files are going. Later in the installation process we are also going to be asked where all the user writable files are going to be going. So this splits the program across two directories now so that uh, ordinary users should be able to use the program without having to have full administrator rights to the machine and full administrator rights to be able to install to the program files or the IBM directory. I'm going to go for custom and within custom I'm going to leave everything ticked. After I click next, this is where I get the opportunity to specify the second directory. This is the user writable files, things like logs and configuration files will be stored in this area. As you can see it's different, it's C colon backslash program data IBM transformation extender underscore 11.0.0. Let's leave that as the default and now the product is installing. And there we have it, installation has completed successfully. Let's install the runtime next. Again, I'm going to install in English. We'll go through the screens again. I'm going to agree to the license agreement. I'm going to go for a custom install. I'm going to leave everything ticked. This time around you'll note that it doesn't ask me for the directories, it's going to install it in the same place as the Design Studio, so it's going to go in Program Files IBM. And that's that product installed. You will note that I did not get asked for the second directory, the writable directory, because it took that entry from the first installation that I did, in this case Design Studio. If I'd have installed the products the other way around, the runtime would have asked for both of those directories and the Design Studio would have taken them without prompting. Let's have a quick look at the files that have been installed. In the C drive, under Program Files, I have an IBM directory and in there I have Transformation Extender 11. This is not normally writable by a standard user and this is where all the non-writable files will go. If I go back to the C drive and then into program data you will note that I have an IBM directory and within there transformation extender 11 again this is where all the writable files will go the user will have access to be able to change these files and in config we will have all the config items including the config.yaml file and in the logs directory all the logs will get created for starting and running the launcher for example If I had decided that I wanted to run Transformation Extender 11 the same as previous versions and have it all installed in the IBM directory just off of the C drive, 
what I could have done is answered both questions with that directory and then it would have created a directory in here and both the writable and the non-writable sections would have ended up in here and it would have been like a previous version everything all in the one directory but that does mean that the user does have to have full rights to this directory it's not for everyone um, but you can get a traditional install if you want to by just specifying both directories to be exactly the same and if you want to you can choose the default that uh, it used to be for 10.1.2 and, and below. Next thing to do is to validate that the system is working properly by running the command server and then the launcher. So on the same virtual machine I have a project in my workspace called Hello World. We have a file called input.txt, contains the strings hello world itx is working, some of which is in lowercase. And if I double click on my compiled map here, test 1, we can see that the command server runs, says the map runs successfully, and we have an output.txt file which has capitalised both strings. This is confirmation that the command server is working fine. I'm now going to delete the output.txt file. I'm going to rename the input.txt to .bak and then I'm going to start the launcher service using the services applet. I've previously deployed an MSL which is going to run the same map every single time input.txt appears. So if I copy my input.back, rename it to .txt It gets transformed to output.txt, the map has run, and this is the result. So we can be sure that both command server and launcher are working. The final verification, of course, is to check that the design studio starts. Standard workspace. Of course here is my design studio and here is the Hello World project that I created earlier to demonstrate the command server and launcher working. So there we have it, ITX11 installation in a nutshell. I want to thank you for taking the time to watch my video presentation today. If you found the content interesting and informative, please hit that like button, perhaps leave me a comment consider subscribing to my YouTube channel as I release content such as this on a regular basis. Feel free to reach out to me on popular social media channels at Paul Brett IBM. Thank you.